Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, my name is Toy. Today we're going to be talking about a Fire Striker deck that splashes death um, to do some fun tricks with uh, ranged attacks. We're going for a zone overload with this deck and a damage reduction package. It has been surprisingly fun to play and there's lots of moving parts to the deck and I love decks with lots of moving parts. Um, so yeah, let's check it out. So here we are in Tabletop Simulator uh, looking at this Striker deck. Um, so if you don't know what Striker is, he's a 6 hand size, 29 vitality, air, death, fire, response. After your opponent discards momentum, you burn them one for each momentum discarded, or you can commit him to discard as many momentum as your uh, attacks in your card pool, uh, and then add a ranged attack from your card pool to your hand. Unfortunately, you can't trigger that response on the enhance because it's not playable while committed, but that's okay. We're just going to focus on being able to add a ranged attack back to our hands. So going into our attack lineup, we are doing a high zone overload ranged package. Um, this is a fire deck and we are splashing in some death using Spirit Shotgun and Withering Toxin. We are using Moon Flare. It is a gauge 5 stun 2. It's a great opener for us. Um, if we manage to get the gauge off, we are running a second copy of Striker so that we can get a little bit better value out of uh, Irradiate and Swift Exorcism. Um, we're also running Grenade Toss, it's Striker's signature move. Um, it's what's going to let us get away with this high zone overload, so that if our opponent has to start blocking mid, they're going to start taking an additional 2 uh, damage of burn every time they do it. Uh, also when we play this, they lose a momentum, which we can then trigger Striker, so they're going to burn next drop that. Uh, we're running Firefly Gunner, because it fits within that package. It's also a stun 1. We can easily push it to 6, uh, or we can use it to gain momentum if we need to. Uh, then we have a Radiate. A Radiate's going to let us tutor stuff out of our discard pile equal to how many characters we have. The primary thing that we're going to be going for is almost always going to be out of your league to help protect our uh, attack pushes so that we can keep our enhances safe uh, so we don't have to worry about getting revoked or Toguro'd or whatever else if they're going to re uh, reversal us, all that kind of stuff. It helps us protect all that. Um, on the off chance that we get the second Striker in our hand, we can get plus four damage off of it, so that's cute. We are running Swift Exorcism, so again, this is going to let us snipe things out of our opponent's staging area. If we ever get the gauge off and get the second strike run, we can start sniping bigger things. It's just going to help us debuild our opponent while we're putting pressure on them. Um, we're running two copies of Withering Toxin, so this is off-symboled on both Air and Death. So depending on what you're playing as your attack lineup, so both Moon Flare, Swift Exorcism, and Grenade all have Death on it, which lets us play the Withering Toxin and lets us play the Spirit Shotgun. Alternatively, on Air, we have Grenade Toss... Firefly Gunner, and Radiate, which will also let us chain into the Withering Toxin. Now we do have Striker, which lets us pull an attack out of our card pool, so we can use him to correct our symbol chaining if we need to, depending on how we're doing things. Um, but a cool play that you can do with Withering Toxin is you can uh, play it, you can enhance on the second enhance on the card so that you can declare zero, clear nothing, draw nothing, but still flip a card in their staging area. Then you can enhance on Striker to add Withering Toxin back to your hand. So it lets us snipe things. You can also block Reversal Withering Toxin and then do the same thing to add Withering Toxin back after uh, removing their attack that they just played from the game. Then you can draw a card and you can do all the things that way. So it's it's got some interesting interactions that way. And then we're running one copy of Spirit Shotgun because it synchronizes really well with the rest of the deck. It's the hardest card to play uh, genuinely because it doesn't chain with a few of the attacks in the deck, but when you when it works out, it works out fantastic. And we can tutor it. We're running a tutor package uh, to be able to pull it out of the discard pile. So uh, it's it's a really good one of in this deck because it can catch people off guard. Um, we don't need that card over there. Okay, so we talked about out of your league. It's going to help us protect our uh, what we want to be doing in order to kill our opponents. Um, the three assets that we're running is a copy of Kanzuki Dojo. So nothing in our deck pumps speed so we do not care about destroying a foundation for minus three speed that is just purely a benefit to us additionally we are going for a damage reduction um, package in this deck so being able to gain three vitality when we take six or more is fantastic for us um, it is just playing along to everything else that we want to do we're running two copies of spiritual shooting ring for the ability to double our range attack damage because we are running a full range deck and we can use it to clog our opponent's card pool on the opposite turn, because again, we're just trying to endure attacks more so than just block them. So we just want alternative choices that way, and it helps us clog what they're doing, and hopefully buys us another turn. 
Um, we're running a copy of three eyes in order to change zones if we need to. So if we feel like our opponent can loop high blocks and we can push something to low when we need to pump damage on it. Or we can take our spear shotgun and push it high in order to make sure that everything stays at that nice high zone overload. So it's it's got some good plays to it. We're running four copies of Dark Side. It's fantastic. It negates things. It's playable while committed. It returns things to printed speed. It's got a one plus low block. It's just a really good card overall. We're only running two two checks, so it is fairly safe to push out four of those. We're running four copies of special special riot control. This is massive damage pump in this deck. It is two per range card in our card pool, which we can easily push to three or four. Um, getting a plus six or plus eight damage on an attack is a great way to finish things especially once our opponent's getting to the point where they cannot full block any longer um, we're running one copy of despise all evil if your opponent ever extends into you just a little bit too far this card helps guarantee that you're going to lock down that backswing by disabling the rest of their staging area and pushing through attacks uh, we're running one copy of herald of germania we do have the ability to get our second character with this but additionally it is just uh, asset control so it is very good for that. It's one of those cards where if you're going to run a sideboard with this, you may want to have more copies depending on how much of a problem assets are in your specific playgroup. We're running four copies of Purifying Roar going back to the fact that we are running a damage reduction package. This card is fantastic. If we go back to our attacks, we are running four Moon Flares and four Irradiates, both that have gauge five on them. So this lets us remove those cards from our discard pile for minus five damage. But it also has the R commit after you remove an attack during the enhanced step to draw a card which synchronizes very well with Redeemed Rogue, another card that goes wonderfully with ranged uh, packages. Remove a ranged or combo attack from your discard pile for plus two or minus two damage. It pumps when we want pump. We can damage reduce when we want to reduce damage. And then it helps us trigger our Purifying Roar effect if we want to just draw cards. It does lots of stuff. It's great. We're running three copies of Kieran's Soul. This could easily go up to four, depending on your play group. Uh, we just want that block to deal no damage but it also gives us a little bit of speed reduction if we need to get that a little bit further. Um, it's just a fantastic card. Helps against throws, helps against shotguns, that sort of thing. So if you're worried about just big, slow shotguns, it's going to help us prevent that. Um, Guardian of the Spirit Sword is going to give us speed reduction for basically free once per turn. Uh, but one of the big reasons why it's in here is because it's also going to let us tutor our shooting rings to help us push more damage out. It's also gonna help us grab Kinzuki Dojo if we are dealing with a situation where we need to block more often. We can get that Kinzuki out, get some speed reduction in there. We can get some uh, more vitality gain in there. We are also running two copies of Flashy Fighting Style. So now, remember how I talked about we had a tutor package in this deck? So Flashy Fighting Style is gonna let us put any uh, attack from our discard pile into our card pool and then seal it. But sealing doesn't take away the ranged keyword, so we can still pick it up with Striker. So this one only works during our turn, and then Power Cycle only works during our attack. So they both have their own kind of nuances behind how they're going to work. But Power Cycle we can use, and it doesn't seal, so we can grab Grenade Toss with Power Cycle if we just want to guarantee getting burn damage through once we know our opponent can't commit to high blocks anymore. Um, or we can just use flashy fighting style to grab things that we want to be able to draw off striker to use then as attacks later on. Or we can also just take advantage of either one to add damage to special rider control, depending on how the math is working out for you. So those cards are fantastic. We're running two copies of Not Over Until You Die. This is another kind of soft tutor. You can flip it to add an attack onto the top of your deck, which we can then either use Purifying Roar triggers to draw, or we can use Prideful Personality to draw. Um, also, once we get two re uh, cards removed from the game, either with Redeemed Rogue or Purifying Roar, we can then first form with it to just draw more cards and help us get more options available to us or whatever else we need. We talked about Redeemed Rogue on top of all the synergy that we're running with it. It gives us damage when we want damage, it reduces when we want to reduce, and it's going to help us prevent uh, destruction effects from going off, which is great because, again, we want to protect what we're doing in this deck because we're usually trying to make bigger, more clunky plays. And if they get negated, it can seriously hinder our plans or it can just straight up lose us the game. So that is quite important. Two copies of Prideful Personality. It does have a steep cost of discarding two cards. So if this enhance gets revoked or canceled in any way, we're just straight up out of two cards, which is why it's very important that we have the ability to tutor out of your league using Irradiate. So we can tutor that. We can protect our card draw if we need to draw. Um, we can protect our tutoring. We can do whatever we need to do. Uh, 
Um, it also has some cute synergy with the Azure Nightmare. If we want to discard these, we can burn them for a little bit more vitality. Um, we're getting burn off of Striker with his momentum loss. We're getting a little bit of extra burn off Grenade Toss. So this deck kind of operates as a pseudo clock deck, which often happens with high or with zone overload decks. We talked about Power Cycle, uh, very similar to Flashy Fighting Style, only if we block with it, we can ready things. It, that's no, not really the reason we're running it. We're running it for that uh, ability to throw things into our card pool and get effects off of it. We're running Worthy Vessel. It's a simpler, almost a simpler form of Redeemed Rogue, only it's going to let us remove cards from our opponent's card uh, discard pile in order to give us some discard pile control. We can, in the worst case scenario, use it on our own discard pile to then trigger um, Purifying Roar if we need that draw. If we're tutoring with um, Not Over Until You Die, we can do some tricky things with that. Um, but again, we can lose Vitality for either more damage or to reduce damage, which is more stuff that we want in this deck. We're running three copies of Wishing Ward. It's fantastic. It is discard hate. It is uh, going to help us get momentum off our opponent, which helps us burn with Striker. It's also going to help set up our discard pile for our tutor engine. It just does all the things we want it to do. And that is the basic structure of this deck. It's, I've been loving playing it and loving testing it. it. I put it together kind of as a challenge for myself and as I've been playing it, it's been incredibly successful. So I decided to share it with you guys. It fits in very nicely with the splash video that we've been doing on the multi-symbol series. So check that out if you haven't already. Okay, so that was the whole Striker deck. If you want to try this deck out for yourself in Tabletop Simulator, we've included the file and instructions on how to get it into your version of Tabletop and down in the comments. So check that out. Let me know if you do try it out and what changes you made to it and how it's working out for you because I would love to get feedback on the deck. And as always, this was Toy. Until next time, see ya.